Can I help you? I need to see the Archmage, Master Marcus. It's urgent. Why are you bothering me with that? The Archmage and I, we aren't necessarily the best of friends. I can't get into the upper part of the town without a mage diploma. I understand, and what should I do about it? I thought, well, maybe you could lend me a diploma. I urgently need to give something to the Archmage. Something important for the good of the world. Everything the good does is, after all, important, right? But I can't help you. I can't just award degrees to any old Tom, Dick, or Harry. The Mage Guild already has me under close scrutiny. Why don't you like the Archmage? Did he do something to you? No, no, it's... No, no, it's... It's just that we've known each other for aeons. You could say all our lives, really. And he... he gets on my nerves. Why? His raised index finger. His idealism, his... He always just sees the good in everything. What's wrong with believing in good? Nothing. I used to as well. But when you look at what's happened to this town, what's happening to so many other towns, then you really have to be an idiot not to doubt everything. I see no reason to. Then you're just a happy gnome. Whoa! Nice glasses you're wearing. Hmm? Oh, these. These are magic glasses. We mages can read invisible secret texts with them. Something like that really exists. Of course. Many mages are very distrustful and guard their knowledge like a treasure. And what are you reading there? The weekly magical paper, classified section. Wow. Is there really no other way? I must give the Archmage something important. I'm not going to take it to him. And Bill the Merchant is not permitted in the upper town. There's the town guard. He could take it up there for you. I... I... I can't. I swore to give it to the Archmage personally. Then, my little friend, you're going to have to become a mage graduate. <laughs> can I do that? Become a certified mage, I mean? Of course. Anyone can be whatever they want, if only they desire it enough. Yes, that's true. No, it's not. But I can try, can't I? Most people have so little magic in them that they can't even cast one itty-bitty spell in their whole life. I want to try. Don't be silly. What else should I do? I'm certainly not going to just sit around here and do nothing. So, can I become a student? <sighs> All right then, Mr. Gnome. Wilbur Weathervane. Then, Wilbur Weathervane, if you want to be admitted to this mage school of excellence, you will need three things. You need a mage's robe. Not just any old rags, of course. Something substantial made of magical fabric. Then you need a wand. That's your most important tool as a mage. Well, besides your mind. And thirdly, a pile of gold. Gold? A whole pile of it. If I'm going to be wasting my time, I at least want to get paid for it. Fine. And how fast can I complete my diploma? That depends entirely on you. As a pupil of this establishment, you can take your exam at any time. Some manage very quickly. Most never pass at all. You wouldn't perhaps have an old robe I could wear? Certainly not. Not in your size anyway, little man. Anyway, it's tradition for the prospective mage to tailor their first robe themselves. Can you sew? Oh, I was always good at handicrafts. That's good. You can't imagine how ridiculous lots of these mages look with their self-tailored robes. Or without them, when a gust of wind blows. Mage robes have to be made out of a special magical fabric. It protects you from many simple spells and curses. But for that, it has to be sewn using a magical needle as well. Hmm, so I need a magically treated cloth and a needle and thread. That much is clear. And I need a pattern. I mean, it's not like I know a lot about magic robes. Can I buy a magic wand here in the school? Or is there somewhere else I can find one? You can't just buy any old wand. The wand has to fit the mage, you understand? 
The wand picks the mage, not the other way around. Ask Bill the Merchant if he's got a couple of wands. Lots of good mages have died recently. Perhaps you'll get lucky. I'm a poor gnome. Where am I supposed to get a pile of gold? If I knew where there were piles of gold just lying around, then I would have helped myself by now, don't you think? Can't I just work off my debt once you've accepted me as a student? Ah, a gnome can't earn that much with honest work. You don't expect me to steal, do you? There are many gradations between honest work and stealing. Take Whooperman, the showman. He's very rich, and that without ever having worked, and without ever stealing. How does that work? He knows people's folly and makes use of it. Ask him. How can I find him? His wagon is out there on the meadow. Here, take this. A postcard? It shows you the most important points around here. You can use it to quickly get between one place and another. I'll go and get what I need then. If you say so. Maybe, maybe it's been written on using magic chalk. It's blank. But it could have been written on using magic chalk. A stylish blackboard for a mage school. With that head, it almost looks alive. It is alive. Really? Yes, and covered in magical chalk. I knew it! Oh, I'd give a lot to be able to read these books, but I'm sure only students are allowed to do that. Some kind of mini kitchen. There's a lot of weird ingredients that could be used for the pot. Could I maybe just once? No. But I... Just for pupils. What is that? A mirror? I can only see myself in it faintly. The frame is quite heavy and decorated with all sorts of faces and skulls, and the mirror surface, it flows. I've never seen anything like it. I wonder how many humans once trained to become mages here? Three. Do, do. Beneath the head there hangs a sign. It reads, The sheep, a mage's best friend. It protects us, it keeps us warm. Wow! Sheep are a little like cows, small, woolly cows. A ratty old box containing some strange objects. Most are quite dusty. Um, Master Marcus, what are all these things in this box? Hmm? Oh, that's just old magic stuff. Help yourself. Great, thanks. Here's a needle and some thread. And here are three small glass vials filled with coloured portions, all tightly corked. Hmm. Um, the rest really does seem to be just junk. A lovely crystal ball on a small stand. Hmm. It looks completely transparent to me. No fog, no burning eyes, and no visions of the future to be found. Um, Master Marcus, can you predict the future with the ball? You what? Well, that's just silly hocus pocus. You need tea leaves or tarot cards for that. Then why do you have the ball? It was a promotional gift. May I have it? If you like. A shorn sheep, I think. Sheep are more dangerous than they would have us believe. They're hiding something. That's what Grandad says. Oi, wait! You! You! What's going on over there? Ah! Wow! A supervillain! I'll get you if it's the last thing I do! It'll be your turn sooner or later! Hello. Excuse me. Oh, hello. A young gnome. And he's got outstanding manners to boot. What brings you here? My name's Wilbur Weathervin. I'm from the White Ridge Mountains, and I have to speak to the Archmage. Well then, young Wilbur, I'm Willy the Wondrous. What can I do for you? Are you the showman Master Marcus told me about? I don't know which showman your Master Marcus told you about, but I am a showman. 
Willie Wapperman is the name. Some people call me Willie the Wondrous. But I only run my little fun fair on the side. First and foremost, I'm a fortune teller. Is it true that you're very rich? Why do you ask? Do you want to rob me? As a fortune teller, you, you'd have to know if I wanted to rob you, wouldn't you? I like you. Of course I would know. I think... No, you don't want to rob me. What do you want, then? I need a lot of gold to be accepted into the mage school. A pile of gold? Uh-huh. Hmm. I do have that much gold here, but it's the top prize from the Wheel of Fortune. I can't just give it to you. Of course not. That would be too easy. Can you really predict the future? Of course. People come from all across the land to ask me for advice, and I give them good tips in exchange for good gold. And what do they want to know? They want to know, for example, if the price of bread is going to rise. Then I tell them, yes, the price will rise. Then everyone buys lots of bread as a precaution, and the price really does rise. Fascinating. Or the women want to know what next season's colour will be. I always know. So if you say that the ladies will be wearing green next year... Then everyone wears green. You must be an excellent fortune teller, then. The best. Would people pay me so much gold for my prophecies if I wasn't? These cages, what are they for? Oh, the animals used to be part of my fair, but since I started earning my money with fortune-telling, they're just a hobby. Apart from the pigeons, of course. What's with the pigeons? The pigeons deliver my prophecies throughout the land. I work mainly for people I don't know personally. Why? Well, how shall I put it? Should a prophecy not quite come to pass, then it's better to be far away, don't you think? Could you predict my future for me, please? I'd really appreciate it. I see that I can. Wow. But I don't have any gold. Not a problem. I perceive that today it's going to be on the house. Ooh, weird. So, come on. Om, om, hocus pocus, I see the future. What do you want to know? What will the day bring? I see darkness. Uh-oh. The day will end in it. Hmm. Even I could have predicted that. Today you are going to play Wheel of Fortune. And when you do, you are going to ask yourself if you'd have done so without my prophesying it. Do you want to know more? Will I be able to master the tasks that lie before me? No. You'd be better off giving up and going home. But then I would have failed. Yes, sir. And I'd have been right. Do you want to know anything else? If you can see into the future, tell me what question I'm going to ask next. You... well... Oh, the connection's broken. I'm sorry. Oh. Your question was perhaps a bit too specific. My gift is very erratic. Mm, thanks just the same. That was very interesting. Ooh, strange. An empty cage, I guess. The sign says, Ziggy, the invisible pink squirrel, may bite. Please stay back. Uh, Ziggy's doing well, I think. The cage is lined with straw. 
There are lots of pigeon feathers and, uh, well, the other stuff the pigeons leave lying around. I'll just take one feather, a big clean one. A cage full of hair. Huh, here's a small sign saying Bertram, the world's fattest hamster. Wow. I don't know if Bertram really is the fattest hamster in the world, but I reckon he's right up there. Uh, excuse me, but your hamster, Bertram, isn't he a little overweight? Of course, he's the fattest hamster in the world. But isn't the cage just a touch too small for him? No, Bertram likes it cosy, and he doesn't move around all that much. Oh, imagine that. Are you sure there's nothing wrong with the squirrel? You think so? It looks pretty normal to me. Maybe the crystal ball from the mage school would work better. His other predictions are pretty useless. You're all right, aren't you? I hope he's all right. It's such an impressive animal, don't you think? Oh, yes. Cute little rodent there. But feisty. He could rip off your finger with those fangs if you're not careful. Could I have a go on the Wheel of Fortune, please? With pleasure. How does it work? As you can see, there are four different colors. Red, yellow, green and blue. You tell me which color the wheel is going to stop on. If you manage to get it right three times in a row, then you win the jackpot. Isn't it rather unlikely that someone would be able to guess the right color three times in a row? If it was easy, then the top prize wouldn't be a sack of gold. Okay. Which color do you want? It'll stop on red. All right then, off we go. Oh, sadly that was completely wrong. Do you want to try again? But just one more try. Be my guest. Which color do you want? It'll stop on blue. All right then, off we go. Oh, sadly that was completely wrong. Do you want to try again? I don't think so. The chance of winning is much too small for me. As you wish. You are welcome to try again later. Could you predict my future again, please? I'd be happy to. Home, home, hocus poke. Hmm, that looks a lot different than it did last time. Mr. Wapperman, hello. He looks like he's completely out of it. Wonder if I can ask him questions. Was, was that an answer to my question? Can you speak as well? Okay. Will I fulfill my mission and give the Archmage the ring? No? But then, then it will all be for naught. Hmm. Will something bad happen to me during this adventure? Will, will I be hurt? Am I going to die? Oh. Then tell me.
Huh? I must have fallen asleep again. Excuse me. You, you don't know any more? No? About what? Oh, nothing. I think he really saw into the future this time. But he seems to wake up after a few questions. Could you predict my future again, please? I'd be happy to. Om, om, hocus poke. He's in a trance again. I think I can... Yeah, okay. <clears throat> if Mr. Wupperman always wakes up after a few questions and have to carefully consider exactly what I want to ask him, I think I can do that. Is the colour blue or is it not blue? So, one of the two. That's a help. Hmm, but the colour is shown on the wheel. I'm good at this kind of thing. Could you predict my future again, please? I'd be happy to. Om, om, hocus poke. He's in a trance again. He woke up after five questions, so that means I'll have to find out the right three colours in just five questions. Is it green? Could we play another round of the Wheel of Fortune? We can play two more rounds, if you'd like, my little friend. Which colour do you want? It'll stop on red. All right then, off we go. Outstanding, you guessed right. You see, it isn't so difficult. So, on we go. Just two more correct guesses to win. Which colour do you want? It'll stop on blue. All right then, off we go. Unbelievable! Two in a row. Do you know what that means? Not really. Does it have something to do with the space-time continuum? Not Quite. It means that you are just one away from winning a pile of gold. Oh, the pressure. Which colour do you want? It'll stop on green. All right then, off we go. I... I don't believe it. The chances are... Uh, not that good at all. Exactly. Perhaps you can see into the future, just like me. Certainly not as well as you do. Do I get my sack of gold now? But of course, you've won it. Oh, thanks ever so much. Somewhere down there in the sewers, the King of Thieves has his realm. But I'm much too large to fit down there. A green potion. Can't imagine what that's for. I'm supposed to drink a potion whose effects I can only guess at. On the other hand, hey, what could happen? Hmm, nothing. A vial filled with the red potion. I have absolutely no idea what it does. Maybe the second potion will do something. Strange. Again, nothing. Oh, wait. Everything's spinning. Was that alcohol, maybe? I hope not. I'm not allowed to drink alcohol yet. Oh, back to normal. A blue potion in a little vial. No idea what it does. I'm only going to take a sip, though, just in case it's alcohol again.
Hey, everything's getting bigger. Finally, a useful portion. Okay. I'm almost small enough to get into the sewer, but not quite. Hello, Mr. Merchant. Ah, you. Why is that rat still alive? I'm working on it. Well, good. What do you want? I tried to get into the sewers, but I'm too big. <laughs> I bet you haven't been able to say that too many times, eh? I've got something for you here. It's a shrinking ring. It makes the wearer shrink. That might help. Thanks. What do you mean, thanks? Pay me first. You know what? Just keep the ring. I can look for another way to get into the sewers. I'm sure something will come to me over the next couple of days or weeks. You won't have any problems dealing with the King of Thieves until then, will you? Hmm, right then. Here. But now I'm going to kill that rodent. I have to go. Maybe I'll come by later. If you have to. Let's see if it works. Oh, that's disgusting. Hmm, but it shrank me just the same. Okay. Needs must. Oh. Hopefully I won't grow when we're in the sewers. Off we go. Oof, that smell is not exactly inspiring. I wonder where that... That's far and no further. Who are you and what do you want? My name is Wilbur Weathervane. I'm a powerful mage. Almost. Horaden Wilbur. How can I help you? I watched you escape from the merchant. Very impressive. Thank you. But I think the merchant sees it differently. I thought you looked like a real hero. Although, although you're nothing but a thief. That is undeniable. I've robbed the merchant many times. And I'd do it again. Why do you do it? Why do you steal? Perhaps I'm just greedy. Have a look around. I love the luxury. I don't believe that. If I were to say to you that I have to look after my family and friends, huh? that there's not enough food left for us rats since the inhabitants fled, would that change anything? No. I would still be a thief. But a likable one. But you have to steal. Can't you find some other way to get food? How? Cultivate cereals down here and then bake bread? We're rats. We haven't got sensible thumbs. You could leave the city. There's more than enough to eat growing in the fields and woods. I would go, but how should I get the others out there? Some of them are so weak they are walking on all fours. I can't leave anyone behind. I'm on a mission from the merchant. I'm supposed to take you out. Oh, yes. What's the old skinflint going to give you for that? <laughs> well... I can choose three things from amongst his wares. That means you're hunting me for your own personal profit. You're a bounty hunter, Wilbur Weathervain. No, 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 no. I'm on an important mission, and I need the merchant's help to accomplish it. You should choose your friends more wisely, Wilbur. I'm certainly not going to let myself get caught just so your merchant can have his revenge. But I have to bring the merchant your mask, otherwise he won't help me. And then I won't get accepted into the mage school. Which means I'll never be a powerful mage. Which means I won't be able to see the archmage. Which means I won't be able to give him the ring, which means I'll have failed. Quite complicated, no? You should see my quest log. In any case, I'm supposed to take you out and then give the merchant your mask. Do you want, do you want to kill me? No. Could you kill me? That's another no. Then you should come up with another plan. But if I were to get you enough food so that all of you could eat your fill, would you then be able to leave the city? 
Sure, but where are you going to find all that food? Are you going to steal it? Is it theft if you take some bread for a family of starving rats? Yes, but we would never forget it. Us rats can help you, you know. You could be of help? If you want to be a mage, you've still got lots of work ahead of you. And you'll be surprised what you can find down here in the sewer. We can get you lots of things you won't find anywhere else. <clears throat> would you do that? Of course. That's the deal. You get us something to eat and make it a generous portion. And in return, we'll help you become a mage. But I still need your mask. Sorry. Okay. If you insist, then I'll give you my mask too. But first, you must bring us the promised food. No problem, I hope. Who lives down here beside yourself? Oh, lots of interesting people. My family and all the other remaining rat families, of course. Uncle Juan joined us recently. He used to have a good life in a dwarf bastion, but then a wild robot savagely attacked him. He fought for his life, bravely. Oh, how, uh, terrible. The poor hero still wakes up screaming. Uh, but apart from us rats, there are a few slime monsters, giant spiders, a couple of skeletons. All the stuff that young adventurers expect to find in a sewer. Do a lot of people come down here? Not so much recently. In the past, when the town was more lively, there was always adventurers coming here on the strangest of missions. It was almost as if there was someone standing up there, sending the newbies down the sewer in droves. Crazy. I need to get some fresh air. If you want to draw up a new plan of action, eh? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Shieldhand. Hello, Wilbur. What do you want? Um, Mr. Shieldhand, could you maybe give me a little of your giant sandwich? Nope. Are you sure? Why should I? It's going to be a long day, and I'll still need something to snack on for my next break. And how about if we compete for the sandwich in a thrilling game, Mano y Normal? Hmm. What kind of game? Um, you give me a number between one and a hundred, and if you're wrong, I get the sandwich. And what do I get if I'm spot on? Maybe two sandwiches, or three. Hmm. No. I'm not all that hungry, and to be honest, I find your game pretty stupid too. Then you suggest a better one. Well, there's only one thing. A duel to the death. Um, it's just a sandwich. A deck of cards? Of course. What are you thinking of then? And if I win, I get the sandwich? Sure, why not? I have never lost. I'm Seastone's all-time unbeaten champion in every class. How does this game work? Don't you know Master of Dragon Slayer's Defender? Not really. Well, OK. I'll show you. We've both got a stack of cards. Choose ten from your pile. That's your deck. You should see that you've got three red, four yellow and two green. But you've also got a specialism in polearm weapons and... But only if your magic is light-based, with fire magic or earth magic. And those are the rules, more or less. Get it? All right. But it seems like you don't stand a chance of winning unless you have very good cards. That's not a problem. I've got very good ones. So, are we going to play a game? OK, then let's play a round. But I don't have any cards. I know. I'll lend you some. Of course, I can't give you the impossibly good cards. They're too valuable. I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with the not such good cards. All right, away we go. Ya yeah, boo! I'm the unbeaten champion. Yes, yes. I could beat him. It's just my cards. I don't have a chance with these. According to Master Marcus, I really do have the potential to become a mage. Marcus is teaching again? Yes, and he wants me to be his pupil. I can imagine that. And what does he want? I just have to bring him a magic wand and a mage's robe. And what else? Well, that and a pile of gold. There you go. He just wants to rip you off. Believe me, you can't become a mage. Don't throw your money down the drain. You'll see. 
I think the only reason you keep winning is that your cards are so much better than mine. Why don't you lend me some better ones? What, so that it would be more difficult for me? Why would I do that? If you don't want to ensure a fair game, then I'll do it. I'm going to get some better cards. Good luck, then. I'm going to get my mage diploma. Just you wait and see. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> a small black container. It could be an inkwell. No demon, no danger. Hmm, a roll of transparent tape. Oh, it's sticky. Master Marcus? Yes? Do you know anything about card games? Have you played Master of Dragon Slayer's Defender? Hmm, yes, I played it for a while before Wob came out, but I always lost a shield hand. Back then, he was still old Pew's assistant. He always went on and on about how great he was. No wonder with those cards. I'm playing against him at the moment, and I don't have a ghost of a chance. Hmm, I wouldn't mind seeing young Bartholomew knocked from his throne. Here, these are the best cards I've got. Thanks, I'll put them in my deck, then I can use them in the next match. Give him all you've got. That, uh, that mirror over there, what's its story? Oh, that's a very special mirror. It's a magical mirror. Does it show who's the fairest in the land? No, no, nothing of the kind. It's, how should I put it? It's a gateway to another world. To Wonderland? Not exactly. It's a gateway to the Kingdom of the Dead. Kingdom of the Dead? Yes, that's what they say. Of course, no one really knows for sure. No living being can walk through the mirror. Only ghosts are capable of that. And there aren't many of those around here. Can they come out of it? <laughs> yes, well, as long as I've had that mirror, no one has ever gone in or come out of it. Ta-da! I've got a pile of gold for you, Master Marcus. Really? Amazing. Who did you mug, then? I would never mug anyone. Real heroes just don't do that kind of thing. And that's what you want to be, a hero. Not an easy job, that. But thanks for the gold. Mr. King? How can I help you? The town guard has a huge sandwich, and if I beat him at a game of cards, it's mine. The town guard has always got lots of delicious food with him, but he'd never risk losing any of it. He must be pretty sure that he's not going to lose his game. At the moment, I'm afraid that's a very real possibility. Mr. Shieldhand has much better cards than I do. Hmm, what kind of cards are they? Different game cards, all with a picture and some text. The backs are blue with brown lines. Hmm, I've seen something like that before. Let me think about it. Very well. Hello, what's up? I've got something for you. A game card? I knew I'd seen something like that before. It was swimming around in the sewer, but it stayed dry. It's got a protective coating, you see? It seems to be part of a special card. Auntie Juanita said that the owner threw himself from a tower after he accidentally dropped it down the drain. Wow. Thanks. I hope it helps you. Good luck. I'll use the magic tape to stick both halves of the card together. It works. Hello, Mr. Shieldhand. Hello, Wilbur. What do you want? I actually did find a card. Take a look at this. <gasps> Is this a special card? I'm only asking because of the nubs and such. It's, uh, it's damaged. It's almost as good as new. Uh, no, unfortunately. Absolutely no damaged or repaired cards can be used in play. But I know the rules exactly and I can make no exceptions. You're not allowed to use that card. And you're certain you didn't just make that up? Uh, what? I'm off to get my maid's diploma. You'll see. <laughs> Mr. Shieldhand says I'm not allowed to use a card that's been repaired. Oh, he does, does he? I beg to differ. What's that? 
the official rules. And it says here, one may use a card in any condition as long as at least 51% of the card is intact and the text can be read. Which means... The card is absolutely fine, and that little weasel risks being thrown out of the player's union if he doesn't accept your challenge. Take the rule book, stick it in his pipe and make him smoke it, Wilbur. With the greatest of pleasure. The rules say something very different about broken cards to what you did, Master Shieldhand. That... Um, that can't be right. Oh, yes, it is. I hereby challenge you, and I will use the card. But... Well, that won't help you anyway. I am the champion. That... That's impossible. That was a win, I'd say. But I'm the unbeaten champion. The once beaten champion. May I have the sandwich now? That's not fair. You cheated. I want a revenge match. We agreed that I'd get your sandwich if I beat you, and I won. But I'm not going to give it to you. I want revenge. But what prize would you offer if I won again? Could I go up the tower? No, that can't be done. Something else. What do you want, then? Hmm. A magic wand? I don't have one of those. World peace? Not in my power. Then I think I'll just take the sandwich. I won. Fair and square. And that's exactly what I'm going to tell everyone, too. Oh, that's not possible. I'm the champion. Me! Nobody can beat me. Hmm. How about this? You give me the sandwich, and I'll just forget about ever having beaten you. And I want my cards back. All the cards. Yours too. We've never played. And I get the sandwich? That's it. And this won't ever be mentioned again, OK? All right. Wilbur, did you bring that thing here? I sure did. It almost crashed Tiny Tim. Oh. Ah, uh, sorry, bud. Hey, that's fantastic. With this sandwich, we can all eat our fill and finally leave this hole. Happy to hear it. But we're not going until you get your mage degree. We're going to help. Just ask me if there's anything we should look for in the sewer for you. Oh, thanks. I'll do that. And here's one of my spare masks. I won't let the Martians see me again. You can claim you defeated me. So, good luck. Thanks. Hello, Mr. Merchant. What's the news from the front? Look what I have here. The King of Thieves mask. That's, that's well... Uh, that's what I've said all along. If you want something done, then you have to do it yourself. Um... That's right. Now can I choose something from your stock? Yes, yes, a deal's a deal. You can choose two items. Two? We agreed on three. I uh, don't think so. I still remember exactly. <laughs> you bring me the King of Thieves mask, and I'll let you choose two items as a reward. But nothing from my deluxe range. But... No arguments. You've earned it, my boy. I want to collect my reward. I would like a roll of magically treated cloth as a reward for my epic battle against the King of Thieves. Hmm. Well, the roll is pretty valuable. Do you think someone just give me that mask as a present? I earned that roll. Hmm. Yeah, well, here. You don't happen to have any mage diplomas, do you? Or invitations from the Archmage? In front, next to the free gold. I need a magic wand. Do you have any in stock? Of course. I have the largest range of magic wands you'll find anywhere. Excellent. But you know, magic wands have to match the mage. So they have to come down to test the wands personally. I am the mage. Soon? You? <laughs> That's a good one. I mean it. 
I don't have any time for kids messing about. But I need a magic wand to be accepted into the mage school. Please, let me try it. Ah, uh, well, if you must, come here. Here, wave it around in the air a bit. Nothing. Try this one. It's five and a quarter inch balsa, threaded with a lugworm spinal cord. Mm, this is going to take some time. I've had enough, that's it. There's not one single spark of magic in you, and I'm not having you waste any more of my time. But that was only four magic wands. I don't care, I've had enough. I haven't got any more anyway. Tough. Go and find a wand somewhere else. And thanks for all your help. Hmm. Thanks for nothing. It's there inside me. I know it. I just have to find the right wand. Mr. King? How can I help you? Could you rats look for something in the sewers for me? Sure. What do you need? You wouldn't happen to have a magic wand, would you? Maybe we do. Many mages have come into the sewers over the years. Some of them never left. Could you have a look for a wand for me? Sure. If we find something, we'll hang a white flag in front of the entrance to the sewers and place the wand there. Okay? Great. Thanks. I have to sew myself a mage's robe. Could you see if I can find a pattern? Hmm, a pattern to make a mage's robe. In gnome size, <laughs> not such an easy feat. But there used to be a large tailor's workshop in the east of the town. It is possible that young mage novices also got their robes there. I'll send some rats over. That'll be nice of you. Maybe there's still something there. And now for something completely different. Take care, Mr. King. Take care, my friend. Let's see. Ooh, there's a piece of paper in there. The good old King of Thieves. This is a pattern for a human child's mage robe. That should fit. Hmm, well... I might just have to let out the waist a touch. Here we go! Ta-da! And Grandad always said handicrafts were only for girls. Hmm, let's see. There's something there. It's long and thin. A magic wand. But that by itself doesn't help much. Whew. It works. It works. This is it. This is my wand. No magic in you, my Aunt Fanny. Wilbur, what's that you're wearing? Looks good, doesn't it? If I didn't know any better, I'd say there's a little mage standing in front of me. What can I do for you? I, I found a magic wand. Excellent. But like I said, you can't just use any old wand. You have to be... It shot a fountain of sparks. Really? Mm-hmm. That's unexpected. Congratulations. Thanks. So, I've fulfilled the conditions for admission. I have the robes, the magic wand, and a pile of gold. I have to admit, I didn't expect you to manage that. Well done. Thank you. And you're sure you want to risk all this gold? Of course. It's a very good investment. Well, if you say so. Now you're officially my mage apprentice. The only pupil, and the first in a long time, in Master Marcus's Magical Mage School. Wow. And... And what do I have to do to get my mage degree? You will have to accomplish three tasks that I will set you. I should have known. What do I have to do to become a mage? What kind of tests do I have to pass? Well, that's simple. Three examinations in any order successfully completed here in front of me and you receive your mage degree. In one, you have to brew a magical potion. Herbs, potions and tinctures are an important branch of magic. 
Another involves you coming into possession of a powerful magical artifact. It's important to own precious magical objects. It distinguishes us mages from the general population, and they can be very useful. And of course, you have to perform at least one spell. Whatever you like. Perhaps something with sheep? Well, that doesn't sound like a walk in the park. No, you can't have your gold back. I did warn you beforehand. I'll make it. Don't you worry. I'd like to brew that magic potion. How, how do I do that? In principle, it's just like cooking. You have to get hold of the ingredients and then mix them all together in that big cauldron over there. That's it? Yes, in principle, but a vegetable soup doesn't explode if you stir this in the wrong direction or add an ingredient a few seconds too late. <laughs> you can use all the ingredients here in the school, but you'll have to find some of them yourself. Which potion would you recommend for, for a beginner? No idea. I'd suggest one that's not potentially deadly. Maybe a healing potion or, or, or a mana potion? Oh, please, those aren't real magic potions. These days, those things are bottled industrially in 159 litre barrels. No, it has to be something a bit more difficult than that. Have a look on the bookshelves. There are some recipe books there. What exactly do you mean by magical artifact and where can I get one? That's the whole point of the task. Magical artifacts are extremely rare. The more powerful they are, the more difficult it is to find them. And how powerful does it have to be? You can't really say exactly. You show me an artifact and I will evaluate it. You can only be absolutely certain if you find an extraordinarily powerful object. Legions of mages have been hunting for such objects for generations. And once you finally get hold of such an artifact, then you don't let it go. There's even a story that the famous mage Balthazar the Brittle took his most powerful artifact with him when he died, so that no other mage could get their hands on it. Took it with him when he died? How did he manage that? No one really knows for sure. But that mirror over there has something to do with it. It belonged to Balthazar, and somehow he managed to take his artifact with him to the other side. What kind of artifact is it? An amulet. You can see it in the old portraits. But nowadays, no one really knows what it's capable of. It's extraordinarily powerful. That much is certain. So powerful that I would be sure to pass the test were I to bring it? You can bet your life on that. Right, then I'll get it. <laughs> Good luck. That's a ghost mirror. Only ghosts can pass through it. Hmm, is there a simple way to become a ghost? You have to die. If you're interested in this subject, then you should stop by the Swamp of the Dead. There's someone living there who I'm sure can help you. The Swamp of the Dead? Hmm, yes. It's here on my map. I can already do magic. I made a bunch of sparks with my wand. Oh, please, that's not magic. No, you have to perform a real spell. Make something disappear. Or transform something. Something like that. The best novices traditionally turn someone into a sheep. Into a sheep? Why a sheep? The sheep is the mascot of our order. They're soft, they're warm. Have you got a problem with sheep? No, no. I just don't know how to go about something like that. Of course you don't. It takes years of practice. Years of practice? I don't have years. I need that diploma straight away. Even simple spells, levitation or the like, need lots of practice. That's assuming there's even enough magic in you. I have to find a spell I can learn today. There isn't any such thing, at least not here. I'll teach you your first spells in the next few months. For anything else, you'll have to look elsewhere. I have to study some more. Goodbye, Mr. Teacher. Goodbye, little pupil. You summoned me, Mother. A book. Directions to the artifact are in an old book. And it is lost. That damn elf must have it. 
Not to mention a ring. A ring has been sent to the Archmage. Uh, curses! Who has it? Just a gnome. My spies tell me that he is already in the town. But he has not yet been admitted to see the Archmage. We must stop him! Yes. Before the old man becomes aware of anything. <laughs> hmm. I think I have an idea. The gnome will never reach the Archmage. But, uh, Mother, I'll need your help. 